Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is on trailer jockey wheel maintenance and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. So somehow we end up always with lots of trouble with jockey wheels. We get to the point where the wheel itself doesn't rotate very well. So when you're trying to maneuver the trailer around, the wheel just drags sideways and you flat spot it. Although I've been spraying this and it started to free up a little bit, you can see down here that the handle's moving with it. And it's only when you can move the handle independently of the wheel that you can wind it up and down. So it's pretty seized. Now, given our kind of lack of time and inclination to do a lot of maintenance on these, we thought we'd pull this part first, have a look inside, see whether we can clean it up, get it going again, because they're about 70 bucks each, so they're not super cheap. In the top of the handle here, there's a roll pin that holds it in. So I'm gonna push that through, get the handle off, and see if we can just get the whole thing apart. Roll pins are also called spring pins, depending on where you're from. And either way, you just punch them through. So there's the pin, came out pretty much intact. And you can see it's just got that seam along the center so it sort of springs together and it can push out. You can see with this one, you get a little bit of independent movement. The whole thing spins and I can move the handle within a certain arc whilst holding the wheel still, but not a lot. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is actually put this bottom section here in the vise so I can really try and get that handle turning. It's possibly fair to say this one's a bit too far gone. I think if I put a bar on it, saying I'm actually just gonna bend it. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this one aside and actually get a reasonably new one off another trailer. It's not in bad condition, but it's already starting to show signs of going this way. So I'll use that one. Maybe once we have a look how it works inside, we can develop a strategy for pulling this apart. Maybe not. Here's the newer one. It's a very similar design. The backing plate here looks identical, but it's actually got a much smaller wheel on it, which I always think larger wheels are great. You know, they run over obstacles easier, but as far as I can tell, other than that, they're pretty similar. Now, sometimes with these, if you wind them all the way extended, this section actually sort of just drop out. Sometimes people do it accidentally. This one seems to hit a stop before it comes out. So I'm gonna knock the spring pin out again, or the roll pin, and see if we can then just pull the whole assembly down. You can see already that other handle didn't come off at all. I actually gave it quite a bit of a yank. Every part of that other one's pretty corroded. Let's take it to the bench, the light's better there. What we've got at the top here is a little bearing where the weight of the trailer essentially rests on so that obviously it can still pivot, so I'll show you that. With the jockey wheel disassembled now, starting at the very top, you can see here there's a section where the thread's been ground off and that's because the inside of the handle is keyed. So it's that keyway or that key shape that allows it to turn and the roll pin that just stops it pulling off. On top of that, there's a little simple bearing. There's a washer below it or a race. It's actually got a groove in it for the ball bearings to roll in and then a little bushing in the top. This little plate it runs on is then welded onto this shaft. As you may have heard, when I picked this up, what fell out of this is a similar sort of race washer that was up in the top of it, and that sort of completes the race ball bearing race configuration on here with the bushing in the middle. Now, you're not really going to be able to see in there on camera, but it's corrosion in here and resistance on this side that stops the wheel from turning when you're maneuvering the trailer. And that, to be honest with you, is a bigger problem. And by a bigger problem, I mean it's something we get more frequently because it is a large surface area of metal to have corrosion on it. And because this section is slightly sealed internally, the worm drive in here, it means that this gets corroded less frequently 
And to be honest with you, even if you can't wind it up and down, you can still flip it 90 degrees. So as a result, I'm not so worried about this corrosion, but I do still think it's worth looking at trying to solve. You can see this section here is kind of crimped. What I would like to do maybe is sacrifice that one that's completely cactus anyway, cut it open and just have a look at how this mechanism works. Cause that might give us some ideas about how to save this one from ending up in the same way. What I'm going to try to do first is see if I can get a pry bar and just pry this handle off. It's quite seized, but it might come off. All right, there we go. Okay, I'm going to cut this end just off, I think, just run around it, and then we'll take the bits over to the bench. This one feels like it's got the two races. They've got the same grooves, but there's no sign of a bearing left there. So this is the worm drive section taken out. The female section is in here. I'm actually going to cut this a little bit more and see if I can actually separate the casing. So this is the outer casing that I cut initially through near the top and then split down so I can open it and get it off. All it is really is some crimp sections that lock into a groove here on this female section. If I grab this old jockey wheel, you can see it's all this stuff that really sticks it together. We've tried a few different products just sort of try and prevent this and I can see here it's actually got a lot of dust in it too so I think as you're driving dust gets into the lubricant the lubricant itself becomes more of a glue depending on what you're using we've tried thin things we've tried thicker things I must be honest one of the things that worked the best was actually PB Blaster but it's very very hard to find in Australia oddly you just uh, you just don't seem to be able to get it in shops but it did work quite well now from a maintenance point of view I actually didn't have to cut this to take this out. I just took the handle off and I dropped it down. So I could actually take this over to a wire wheel. I'd get all the gunk off, maybe take a bit of the gal off as well, which isn't great, but I could clean this up and then perhaps use a large diameter wire brush to clean up the center section of this. Maybe we're back in action. With regards to these larger surfaces that allow the wheel to turn, I'm thinking perhaps the idea is just to pull it apart maybe coat it with a grease, like a waterproof grease, lithium grease, reassemble it, and then just periodically take it apart. It's a little bit hard to flush. You can kind of flush it if you turn it upside down, and then if we put this back together. Once it's upside down, you can actually get some water and spray inside here and clean it out a little bit. And maybe just periodically a bit of fresh water is the answer. I could put a grease nipple near the top of this outer part, put it in quite shallow so that it doesn't affect the intersection rotating or scraping on it. I'm not 100% sure whether you're going to get a very good distribution of the grease though. So maybe the answer here is just to disassemble it, manually apply grease to both surfaces, put it back together, periodically clean it and regrease it. It's now many days later and I've just remembered what we we're talking about. To say this week hasn't quite gone to plan would be an understatement, but anyway. Now I can see fluffy bits of that mic. Need some gel. Looking at this reasonably new jockey wheel, it turns out they don't really put much grease on from the factory. And pretty soon, they end up like this. I don't think this one's ever gonna turn again. Not without a lot of effort anyway. And it's probably only a year or so old. I had a chat to Arn about the best way to grease these and we couldn't really come to any sort of agreement. There's a few ways to go. One is you can disassemble it, just grease it, put it back together, see how you go. And I think there's a lot of merit in that. Disassembling it to this stage is pretty straightforward. You know, you pop that roll pin we saw off, take the handle off, you can pull it apart. And it allows you to get grease to most of the critical areas. It allows you to grease the bearing at the top, that will definitely do. It allows you to clean and grease the entire length of the intersection and maybe with a bit of rag or something, grease the inside of the tube as well. 
We can also grease pretty much the whole length of the threaded rod. So really without installing a grease nipple, we can do a pretty good job of trying to prevent this corrosion from happening in the first place. Now, because not all greases are compatible, the first thing I do is take all the old grease off, as much of it as I can anyway. Although we do want to get lots of new grease on, what we don't want is those two greases sort of being incompatible, clashing with each other, and ending up becoming more of an adhesive than a grease. So, start with cleaning. If I had a large ball brush, I think that'd be ideal for cleaning this section, but I don't, so I'm just gonna go with some sort of rag. To clean this up, I'm gonna run with some standard, just heavy duty degreaser, rather than something like a carb cleaner that I might use to get some really hard grease off. The reason for that is it's not that old, so the grease is quite soft, and I don't want to damage that gal coating on the metal. I want to keep that as intact as I can as well. Because this grease is a little bit in the threads, I'll use a brush to try and get the, the bulk of it out. I don't think a small amount of residual grease is going to, you know, have a huge effect, but getting the bulk off is definitely going to help. All right, now everything's cleaned up, let's go find some grease. So this grease is a lithium-based grease with PTFE, which is essentially Teflon. And now the jockey wheel itself is clean, we know we're not gonna have any issues with it clashing with whatever that old grease was. This grease is advertised as being used for boat trailer bearing, so I think it's the right way to go. Just quickly, I'm actually gonna pop these bearing races on the wire wheel, because you can see here, They've already got a bit of corrosion on them. They're literally weeks old, so they're not the best stainless steel or anything like that. So I'll quickly go and clean these up and then we'll grease them. All right, I didn't go to town on these because once again, if they are just steel with a bit of gal on them, I don't want to take all the gal off, but just getting that surface rust off, I think is a good idea. With this somewhat cheaper nasty bearing, I'm just gonna push the grease right through till it comes out the other side. Same way you sort of pack a normal bearing. So this is what the bearing looks like now. Just the grease pushed right in between the ball bearings and the retainer and the cage. Messy, but functionally better. Now while I've got grease all over my hands, I'm just gonna wipe the excess onto this thread and the shaft of this. So this thread seizing is what's been giving us trouble winding the extension up and down. And then corrosion around the main part here is what gives us trouble with the jockey wheel spinning when you're pushing the boat around the yard. That gets particularly annoying because you end up dragging it, you flat spot the wheel, you know, we don't need that. There's way too much greasing of cylindrical objects on this channel. All right, I'm gonna put this somewhere clean, particularly given how much trouble I got in in my trailer bearing video for using a dirty brake pad. It's a long story. As for the inside of the tube, I think I will just put a little bit on this rag. Well, I say a little bit, a lot. And once again, just push it up the tube. It'll get a little bit on there. I guess I could do that a couple of times, just to make sure. Now to reassemble it, I'm just gonna put my bottom race on here. The bearing itself. Then the top race. Then there's just a little kind of PVC nylon spacer that went in between, just to keep them centered on the shaft. the handle back on then I'll just hammer the roll pin back through to hold it all together. There's no great trick to getting these roll pins back in because the top of the shafts actually keyed. You can see there's a flat section on the bottom here which means once you drop this on the holes are all lined up anyway. Now 
And that's it really. Now I'm just going to wind it all the way down. It certainly feels better already, that's for sure. All right, now I'm just going to get rid of this excess grease and then we'll talk about a few provisos. With this setup, the main thing that concerns me is trying to keep the wheel lowered as much as possible. Grease is awesome when it's in between two layers, inside a sealed bearing, all this kind of stuff, but it does attract dirt. So if you have your wheel extended the whole time, the grease dries out, dust blows onto it, that grease will actually attract that dirt and hold it in and become kind of like a putty and possibly make it worse. If you leave the trailer extended up a lot, there are maybe things you could try other than grease. You could try Tetral, which is a sort of a, a rust inhibitor sort of thing. You could try like something that looks like a PB blaster, that kind of thing. So I think maybe there are some sprays. Because you can access that area, you can raise it, clean it, respray it, keep going. I've tried that in the past and I haven't had a lot of luck. And that's why I'm willing to give grease a go now to compare. I am very happy though having grease on that threaded section. I'm happy having the bearing heavily greased, all that kind of stuff I'm very comfortable with because it's inside the unit. It won't get dust on it really. And hopefully it'll stop the salt water getting to the metal. Because this one is pretty much unrecoverable now, it's pretty lock solid. My other thought is if it starts going wrong, if it starts feeling stiff, it's not that hard. Pull it apart, clean it, regrease it, good to go again. So if you start getting that feeling like it's not as smooth as it used to be, jumping on it quickly is going to help you rather than just letting it slide. The great thing about servicing these is it doesn't take any special tools other than maybe a punch to get the roll pin out and it certainly doesn't take a lot of time. Well thanks for watching, I hope this video actually helps you. I know it's not rocket science and not particularly interesting in some ways but we've had a lot of trouble with these and I'm hoping we can have less trouble in the future because of a bit of maintenance. Because we've got our meetup coming up soon, I've got a few life jackets I'm going to try and bring back to life, so I'll do a video on that soon. I've also bought a taco and a solar cell and controller for the green machine, so we'll be installing those soon as well. All right, well, take care, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.